Our team consists of six members. Chetan Machiva, Ayush Sharma, Raj Shah, Rajiv Gusain, Harshal Agarwal, Aman Makwana. Hello, this is batch 2019-21 from International Management Institute, New Delhi. And our topic of discussion is Innovation Audit Framework. Innovation Audit Framework is uh, a framework which is developed on three important pillars of innovation. And these three important pillars come from theories of uh, uh, Joseph Schumpeter, Elizabeth Hoffer and uh, Clinton Christensen. Initially, uh, we will focus on the methodologies that how we actually develop this framework and slowly and gradually we understand this framework from a real life example of some companies and how they actually position themselves in this framework through their business model and they're working in the business environment. So let's get started. Let's talk about some important work in the field of innovation. First, work of Joseph Schumpeter. Schumpeter identified innovation as an important and critical factor for the economic change. He also identified five types of innovation. First, product innovation. Second, process innovation. Third, business model innovation, fourth, new markets, and fifth, new sources of supply. Let's discuss the work of Clayton Christensen. Christensen has defined the term disruption. He has also given three nature of innovation, in which the first is disruptive innovation. Christensen coined the term disruptive innovation. Disruptive innovation are those which generates high amount of jobs and are highly capital intensive. Generally, it transforms what was a complicated and expensive product into affordable and simple product. For example, mainstream computers to personal computers. Second is sustainable innovation. In this phase, one tries to make a good product better. This kind of innovation keeps the market efficient and productive. For example, Gillette added more blades in its product to give safe and precise shaving experience for men. And the last is efficiency innovation. It allows you to sell the same product to the same set of customers but at a much cheaper price. For example, Walmart's everyday low price. Another example of this is Toyota. For a normal US company, it takes 60 days to manufacture a car. But for Toyota, it takes only 2 days to manufacture a car. This implies that Toyota has much lower inventory cost and much lower capital cost. Efficiency innovation generally intensifies the use of technologies. This implies that it eliminates jobs. The important thing is to understand the flowchart of activities and methodology or process of making this framework industry ready. So the most important thing was to go through various literatures and understand what are the factors, elements that come into play when we talk about any innovation that takes place on this earth. On basis of which we made our flame framework of innovation which consists of three axes. There are in total nine elements on first axis, three on another and three on the last. So in total, nine into four into three is equal to one zero eight combinations. You guys can imagine the framework as a 3D model. Now comes the quantification part. I hope you guys are able to differentiate combination from an element. Element, element is on the axis and combination is the intersection of any of three elements. So rather than quantifying all 108 combinations, we focused on 16 elements because any combination consists of three of the 16 elements, which in a way all 108 combinations would get quantified automatically. Each of 9 plus 4 plus 3, 16 elements would be quantified on the basis of Likert scale and scores would be collected on the basis of questions that are asked to the organization. We would take 10 prominent examples to explain the concept of element element combination to understand the extent to which this affect. We would then proceed to focus on lagging and leading components in the organization. So on the basis of this core and leading and lagging components, we would provide recommendations and our analysis to the organization. So we had three accesses. From these three accesses, we took out 108 boxes. Now from 108 boxes we have now 10 examples which will be explained in the following order. The first is of disruption product ecosystem and the example is of Apple PC. 
Apple II was a disruptive product in the sense that it created the first B2C computers and it created a new market of personal computers for final consumers, which before Apple II was only for B2C consumers. The changes in product done by Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs changed the whole ecosystem. The second example is of disruption process organization. Ford conveyor belt is a perfect example of it. Ford streamlined their assembly line and reduced their production time to just 93 minutes. The disruptive process introduced by Ford completely changed the game in auto manufacturing industry. The next example is of disruption service organization in which we have Geo. Reliance Industries in 2016 launched Geo and provided telecom services never seen before in India. Because of them, the overall net prices per GB per person got to the lowest in the world and changed the consumer habits completely. Next we have Disruption Product Group and Macintosh is an example of it. Macintosh team of Apple com company disrupted the interface of then existing computers. They introduced many small functions which changed the accepted features by the consumers and so competitors also had to make changes in their own computers to meet new demand. Next we have incremental product organization. Gillette is an example of it. Gillette understood the power of innovation very early and so they had to put a lot of effort in innovating their products by adding new features and increasing the number of blades, all of this to provide more value to consumers and to stay on top as a market leader. Next example is efficiency product industry. Computers came a long way from what they used to be, being an equipment utilizing a whole room to getting to the size of just a notebook. Computers have gone through a lot of innovation to improve their functioning. Also, these innovations have provided companies with opportunities to spend more capital into research and development to cater to increasing demand. Next is Efficiency Process Organization. Motorola used Six Sigma to improve their defect measurement methodology and this innovation helped Motorola to improve their production process tremendously. The innovation created an industry benchmark which not just affected the manufacturing part of business but overall management as well. Next is Efficiency Business Model Organization. Tupperware innovated the business model to incorporate their customers as their best marketers. They incentivized women, the primary purchaser of Tupperware products, into businesswomen who could sell Tupperware products and earn extra money. This model made Tupperware the most sought after kitchen and household product brand. Next is Sustainable Technology Organization. Hybrid cars made cars more fuel efficient and eco friendly. They created a new trend in automobile industry which every car manufacturer now has to follow to remain in competition. This technology innovation is a big step for automobile sector to become an energy efficient industry. And the tenth one is Sustainable Design and Marketing Organization. Coca-Cola is one of the best marketing company in the world and their time to time innovation in design and marketing practices has put it on the leader spot with very strong hold on that spot. Now, as we are clear with the basics about the idea behind the innovation audit framework as well as the methodology, it is time for most interesting aspect of the project, the quantification. The first aspect of quantification starts from the questionnaire that we have created. We have created a set of 5 questions for each of the 16 elements that is 9 plus 4 plus 3. The industry personnel and the top management of the company would be filling this questionnaire. We'll be taking a cumulative average score of each of the element and find out which combination one from each nine, four and three is the most and the heaviest. This would accurately represent the internal perspective about the company's USP. After identifying which element has the highest score, we have the Likert scale based questionnaire being given weights from one to five, one meaning least likely to five meaning most likely. Now we have found out the average score of one particular element and divided by five that is the number of quotients and get a weight in terms of 0 to 1. Now we repeat this process for all the three elements that we have selected on basis of the highest score gotten from the questionnaire taken by the top management. 
After that, we will map the capabilities and competencies of organization which is in line with the three elements. These three elements will also be plot in the cube. Then the company will have a plethora of options they could take up. Some of them are as follows. Identifying the key component due to which the element weight is the highest, which is its current competitive advantage. It will help industry realize why they are good at what they are, if they have not realized it already. Identifying the reason can be the second part of the aspect for the elements that are lagging behind. This could be potential source of competitive competencies which if invested upon will definitely convert into competitive advantage. Now we have visualized the concepts by making two cube plots. One of the cube plots is the ideal result while the other cube plot is a more pragmatic result. We see that the ideal cube plot has one, one and one in all the three axes and is connected in a form of equilateral triangular plane. This gives us an idea that this plot is equally distributed among the three axes that is all the three axes have equal importance in selecting that particular cube of innovation. In the pragmatic result we can see that one particular axis has a higher weight hence the point in that axis is further away from the origin compared to the other two. This means that the triangle plot is not equilateral and one point is farther away which in turn means that that particular axis has more important role to play compared to the other two. That means that particular axis is the source of their potential competitive advantage and the other two can be invested upon to find out which create a better competitive advantage. And at last, we would like to thank our Professor Ashutosh Khanna for introducing us and giving us the opportunity to work on a revolutionary new concept of innovation audit framework, which is truly very interesting and open to interpretations. Our experience, learning and reading about various innovations, tools and approaches introduced to us by our professor has been priceless. We would love to extend over this work in future. Thank you.